she wouldn't say anything. I was like, what's wrong with you? And then walked in and you were standing there <laughs> and just the relief of seeing you. And it was just like I'd been holding on for so long. And I just felt my whole body just like, relax. This is one of the most special episodes that I've done thus far. And it's been one of the episodes that you have asked for the absolute most as well. I sit down and both Lauren, my wife and myself open up everything as into what's happening in our relationship, how us a family of six are doing what it is that we do, how we have our marriage and our friendship and our relationship and what is it that's really going on. And we really delve deep into in this episode what has happened for us to be able to get here at the end of the day uh, and a lot of the questions that have been coming through from you when it comes to us being able to answer those. So I would love when it comes into this and you listening to this episode, any questions whatsoever that you want Lauren and myself to be able to cover in upcoming episodes, please ask. If you are listening to the podcast, it is easiest to go leave a review and let us know in that review or send me a DM on Instagram. My Instagram handle is at Chris Dufay, D-U-F-E-Y, as I would love to be able to hear from you. And I'd love to personally say thank you so much as well for you joining us in this episode. So I'm energized about doing this because we've never done this before and we've been asked to do this for a really long time by many, many people. And I finally get to sit down with my best friend, the love of my life, my adventure partner, the woman of my absolute dreams. I adore you and I admire you and I respect you and you're just incredible. So to be able to share this conversation with the world, I feel really privileged. Yep. So thank you, Loz. Thank you. Uh, now, we did ask on Instagram, uh, what would you like us to talk about sitting down? And I know you've been riddled with a lot of people asking a bunch of questions for us to be able to answer. What were the big ones that popped up that we can cover in today? Because I know today will be the one of part many. Yeah, so um, the main questions were around our relationship and how we weave everything together and keep loving each other. Um, our lifestyle, health related questions, our parenting, that was a big one. Birth was another big one, but we've talked about we might keep that for a whole other. Yeah. That's, that's a big one. Um, and... Yeah. What do you want to talk about? What do you think is the most um, valuable things we can talk about? For everyone joining us. I think <clears throat> us together is such a different, people will see such a different side of you. They'll see what I see. Um, <clears throat> sorry. And I think what you've been really sharing lately has been opening up so much of what you've been going through the last few years. And yeah, our dynamic will just be such a different dynamic. And so I think I just want people to see what I see in you appreciate that yeah so maybe to kick this off then let's give some context as to how we've gotten to where we are mm -hmm. today because I think that would be really cool uh, I think there's always three sides of the story <laughs> your side my side and the truth <laughs> but I would love to hear from your side yeah the, well you missed some key you. details like I hear him <laughs> Telling our story, I'm like, babe, you forgot the most important stuff. <laughs> yeah, I'd love to hear your. So, whatever you've heard of our story, D forget. Scrap that, and, <laughs> and let's. This is this is what actually happened. So, we are high school sweethearts, and we knew each other for many, many years throughout high school. Um, but I always had older boyfriends, and um, and then there was one of our good friends uh, 18th birthday parties and it was just like something just turned on didn't it we just noticed each other I remember looking at you on the dance floor and just thinking that it is the most amazing <laughs> specimen I've ever laid my eyes on and just being like drawn to looking back I felt like there was just something that was just like pulling me to mm. and then our sort of dating relationship just like it was like there was something much greater than us keeping up, pu pushing us together. And um, 
and so we were young and in love and we had no nothing we used to like scrape together our bus money to be able to buy a pool apart and a bottle of water. So we would literally try to put together change, coins, coins, to pay for bus, bread and water. Yep, and you used to come to my house and then walk home yeah. in the very That's early right. hours of the morning because I'd, we didn't have any money. Yeah. So I'd like stay at your place until like three in the morning and then have like a 45 minute walk home. Yeah. Yeah. And then we were together you know, happily, and then uh, at 21, we broke up for around a year. And that was, um, I think, really pushed by me. Um, you'd never had another girlfriend before. And I just felt like if we continue as we were, we were gonna to get to 30, 35, and you might, as a man, just wonder what else is out there. And um, almost like, I felt like you needed to get it out of your system. So <clears throat> we went our separate ways and you went and experienced what else is out there. Well, I think from my side as well, I remember coming home after we broke up then being devastated mm. uh, and then having dinner with my parents that night and both my mother and my father saying like, it's time to spread your wild oats. Yeah, spread your seed. <laughs> yeah, and so I took that literally. Yes, you did. <laughs> I, said, I took that advice seriously. So. Yeah, and I'd love to know what your kind of like perspective of that now was. Um, I think it needed to happen at the time because we were 21 and you know, it was an important part of what needed to happen um i was just so in love with you still and i don't think i ever fully like we were still we had some booty calls we had some call booty spade calls. Spade. um we were still in touch and we were in such a small uh area where where we lived in sydney everyone knew everyone and there was lots of like I don't know, not cross contamination. It's just a small pool is what I would say. So there was lots of like gossiping and stuff like that. But anyway, and then I was ready to just walk away and say, I've had enough. Um, and then we just decided, let's just do this. And then from that moment, it moved very quickly. and. We moved in together just a few months later for the first time and then we bought our first home together at 22, which was like, I don't know, all of our friends were, most of them were uni students. Actually, I feel like we were probably two of yeah. a yeah. very big group that didn't go to university and we knew that it just wasn't the right thing for us or so we just... We were going to do it differently. Lots of our friends were travelling and and we were just like, I don't know, very focused and very, um, we just knew what we wanted. Well, I think at that stage for myself was I'd become a personal trainer. I'd started my own business and very much because of your influence as well. Mm. Uh, and I was very lockstep on, oh, I, ha I had a plan, but I didn't have a plan when it came to that as well. And then our relationship was just getting stronger and stronger and we were doing, we were being very serious. And I think a part of when we broke up, like I went through some great growth because I moved out of home, mm. I moved in with friends. Like I, I started to actually become a man to some point. Looking back, I was still very much a child. Yeah. Uh, but then, yeah. And then our, you know, after we bought a, a house together and then uh, we bought a second house together. Yeah. And then... You we, we got married and then we oh, bought yeah, the second that house. That was in there as well. I yeah. forget stuff. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, you go. And we would bought this uh, Art Deco 1911 amazing apartment in our dream location. We were just married. You went away to do That's some right. internships yeah, and studying. Um, studying. And... Um, I renovated it and then you came home and it was like, this is our new home. And then a couple of months later, 
we found out that... What about the white light? Oh, yeah. So um, I had a whole lot of reproductive issues as a teenager and um, diagnoses as like an early adult, um, PCOS and just a range of things and was told you, you won't have children, you'll never have children. So I remember before we got married having a conversation with you saying like, are you okay with this because this is what I've been told and I just don't want you to, I just need you to understand that basically. And then um, you being just who you are was like, it'll be fine, we'll be fine, we'll, we'll figure it out. And that was the extent of our conversation about children or babies or anything. We were 25 and we just, that was it. We'd never had another discussion <laughs> since. And then one night we were having a great lovemaking experience and I didn't say anything because I was like, what the hell was that? And you didn't say anything because you were also thinking, what the hell was that? But we both saw this bright white light. And Angel at the point of together. orgasm, yeah, together. And um, a few weeks later, I would, I'd sort of forgotten about it. And then I was getting all of these... Um, like communications from Arlo, who was inside, but I didn't know about babies and things like I we lived in an apartment block, a walk up, and we were at the top floor. There was a penthouse above us, but they were just young yeah. single guys that lived up there. Guys are in budgie smugglers. Yeah, yeah. Um, and there was a um, like a dummy, a pacifier on our doorstep one morning as I was walking out to go to the gym, and I was like, huh. And then I parked my car and uh, was walking up the road to go, I was a trainer as well, to go to the gym. And, um, and there was a baby bottle and a blanket like on the bonnet of my car when I got back. And I was like, this is so weird. It's like a baby's communicating with me. And then um, we were out one night with some trainer friends. And do you remember when I was like curled over in pain? At Hugo's bar and pizza place yes yeah. yeah and yeah I was drunk Chris was drunk I think I actually think it's probably the last time that you drank yeah. and I had to drive us because <laughs> he couldn't drive up to the emergency department of the hospital because I was just like co couldn't stand up straight just in so much mm. pain in my whole um, just like womb space and we went to the hospital I was admitted and they said, we think you've got an infection. Take, take, you can't go home until you take this. And I was just like, it's not, it's not an infection. I am, I think I'm pregnant. And they did a test and they're like, you're not pregnant. Blood test, not pregnant. Um, and they wouldn't let me leave until I took these tablets. So I actually just hid them in my bra so we could go. And then another few weeks passed and I just was still feeling off and my period was late and finally went to the doctor and then it, he confirmed that I was pregnant, which from being told that you'll never have children to then it just happening was quite, it caught us off guard and I remember being so nervous to tell you and just thinking like, you were so, you had such a strong vision and plan and like forging ahead and I just thought like, what's he gonna say? What's he gonna do? Um, this wasn't in the plan. And so you were quite surprised and it took you a few days to get your head around it, which I think is normal as a 25 year old boy. Yeah. Um, and then a few days after that, and we were like, okay, we're going to do this. We've got this beautiful home. We're going to have our, our start a family. And, and then you had a call with a colleague. colleague to basically move to Dubai. And you, I remember sitting, you were in the office and you yelled out and you're like, hey, Loz, what do you think about moving to Dubai? And I was like, okay. And it just felt like we were like, okay to everything to the baby to 
Dubai to just everything. We were just like, okay. And we've often said that we've just been like falling forward, I guess, since that. Yeah. And there's been a lot of opportunity and luck and hard work and gritting and resistance and bliss and everything in between. So then we were planning to go to Dubai together and for me to give birth there. But we were having trouble with the visa and it was this it was quite clunky and we, we knew we were leaving but we didn't really know when and it was taking a really long time. Been a lot of resistance. Yeah, and then my parents we put things in motions too in Sydney to leave. So we had brought in a general manager for our business, given Chris's clients to him, brought in someone to take over me. So I remember realising that we had cut back our income to a quarter of what it was. And it was like, we've gone too far now. Like, we have to do this. We have to go to Dubai because we can't actually stay here anymore. We've burnt our ships. We've burnt the ships. And my parents, they lived just one street over and they brought us around for dinner one night as an intervention and said, Chris, you need to go and Lauren, you need to stay here. And we know that you're adults and you're married and you're having a baby, but you can't go Lauren. Like you can't go to this new place that you've never been to, you don't know anyone and have your first baby there. I'm so thankful they did that. Like I love them so much. And I'm just so thankful that they, they said that because I know. it was harder because I had to go to this new country, I had to start this business, I had to sleep on the couch and I had to grind like I've never grinded before. But it would never have worked if you were there because I would have had to think about you. Yeah. And that was the thing. Like I, I remember so clearly because of the time difference between Dubai and Sydney, we would get this small little snippet of time where I could be text messaging you when I was laying on the couch about to fall asleep. And I remember looking back over my head because I was in this tall high rise apartment looking over the DFC, which is the financial district of Dubai. And then messaging you and just being like the love of my life and she's pregnant, we have this new family coming. But there was something interesting where I'd close my eyes and I'd happily fall asleep, probably from exhaustion, mm. but knowing I was so mission driven that I had to do this. Well, you were able to like switch off the emotional. I um, numbed myself. Yeah. I, I turned that side of myself off, which I think took me a very long time to then get back. Mm. And it still makes me emotional thinking about that time because it was just so hard. And Well, I've got to say out of all of that, it's you that I'm proudest of and that I admire the most because you went through the hardest part. And I think that's a big part of why I'd love to share this. Or even just, if it's just a documenting mm. of this process is because you're the only other person that knows what we've gone through. Yeah. And I know a lot of people say like, wow, you guys live an amazing life. Like, and that's the thing, like you look at what our life is now and we have this incredible relationship together, uh, financial abundance, there's four amazing daughters that are in our lives. Like we've, we've created something better than we thought we could ever create. Oh, beyond. And every day we're like yeah. oh, very grateful yeah. of what's because going on. Because we've earned on. it. Yeah, and there is, there is a, there is a big part of we had to go through hell. Yeah. So a key thing that you miss when you tell our story <laughs> is... Lauren so loves you, giving unsolicited advice. Oh, so <laughs> <laughs> that's, what, that's what wives do. Um, so you left and I was pregnant and I dropped you to the airport at, I think it was like 4 a.m. Yeah. And you were on a 6 a.m. flight. Yeah. And I remember driving home and I went to our favorite little cafe, Whole Foods, uh, Pure yeah. Whole Foods in Manly. And just sat there like, what did I just do? Why, why did I let him go? What, when am I gonna see him again? Like, what are we gonna do? And you had an experience where you were sobbing on the plane what did I just do? Am I ever going to see her again? Like, yeah. she's pregnant, you know, all of this stuff. And then... The weight of it hit me. Yes, of like, it had, it had to happen. And then uh, you were planning to come back when I was 39 
weeks pregnant and then uh, a week before you surprised me and um, I had walked along the beachfront to see some friends and uh, had brunch with them and I was walking home and I was feeling so odd and I remember just thinking I'm 38 weeks pregnant you're in Dubai and I was like oh my god I'm gonna give birth today like this energy and this feeling and this nerves and like I was just talking to her like please just wait one more week please don't come today it's just one more week like as soon as daddy gets back I'm ready when you're ready please don't come today and I remember walking into my parents um, front door and my mom opened the door and she just couldn't she just was like it's like she'd seen a ghost she just couldn't talk and she was just she wouldn't say anything I was like what's wrong with you and then walked in and you were standing there (laughs) and just the relief of seeing you and it was just like I'd been holding on for so long and I just felt my whole body just like relax and I remember like collapsing and you just holding me and we were just so so happy and relieved and terrified I think um and then we had two weeks until Arlo was born so she came the, the night before her due date and I was so conscious of you having to go back. This is the part that you leave out is that you this actually is the went. the hardest part of the whole thing. Yeah, you actually went back. And we had this amazing birth experience, which we'll get into yeah. another time. Um, and then you left when she was two weeks old. And I was feeding her at, again, it was, you know, probably 3.30 in the morning. I remember when I had to leave Lauren and Arlo. So it was two weeks after Arlo was born and I had to fly back to Dubai because I had to get back to work and I had to get everything ready for then you girls to then come over and me have everything ready for that. I remember so clearly, I remember so clearly getting ready because again it was a 6 a.m flight so i was up at 3 a.m do you mean to get ready and then get a taxi off to sydney airport and i was looking at you in bed with arlo this beautiful gorgeous angel of a baby and i had to turn the light off and walk out the door and walk the other way to then go on this mission again and i had to complete my mission yeah and i remember I remember saying to you, don't go, please don't go. I literally turned the light off and walked the other way with Lauren saying, don't go. And that tore me up, tore me up. Fuck, I'm so happy I did it though. (laughs) So uh, just to the next step of, I think the story is then you coming to Dubai yeah. and your beautiful mother Suzanne coming with you to be able to help with that transition and I remember waiting at Dubai airport and you just were not in a good place no <laughs> so Arlo was seven weeks old so we'd been apart for only five weeks but it was just such a critical and there was a whole you know first time mum on her own mm-hmm. None of my friends had babies. My parents were working and out of the house 14 hours a day. Um, and I just, I was alone with this baby and I had so much trouble breastfeeding. And I just remember thinking like, what have I done? Why, why did we choose this? What, what is like, it just felt like a sentence almost. and it got to the point where it was like screw the visa we just need to be together so Arlo and I came in and mum flew with us but we came in on a tourist visa and um we got there and I didn't recognize you because you were this numb armored warrior disheveled (laughs) and you didn't recognize me because I was disheveled and yeah. a new mum and Chris, I'm sorry. yeah and very emotionally um, raw 
and then my mum stayed for a couple of weeks to get us, you know, settled in. I think we have to say where we were staying, what our living arrangements were. Oh yeah, like. okay. So Chris, Chris, Chris Ferguson, Fergie, we if love you're watching you. And listening, I, I'll cry on this one. Uh, few accept us into your home. In that point, I cannot thank you enough. Yeah. So, um, Fergie was a friend of a friend and Chris made the decision. It was either because we had these visa issues, either. I couldn't get a place for us. Yeah. It's legally in Dubai in the United Arab Emirates. I couldn't get a place for us without a proper visa. <clears throat> so we had to do some shady shit. Yeah. So Chris made the decision for us to move into Fergie's spare room. So Fergie was a bachelor and he... This gorgeous human being, so... <laughs> yeah. And he, um, he allowed us into his home and Chris and Arlo and I lived in his spare room and we had a suitcase each and a pram and we stayed there for six months. Arlo's cot was the pram. Yeah, Arlo slept in the pram. <laughs> And we stayed there for six months. And I remember being out in the lounge room. On the, I love you, Fergie, but you had such a bachelor pad <laughs> on the black leather lounge. And I remember the smell of his cologne. I can still smell <laughs> it. Mixed with like whiskey and cologne and leather and Steven. just semen. <laughs> yeah, I don't know, bachelor. <laughs> And I remember being on the on this like smooth leather lounge, breastfeeding my beautiful little two month old baby, and girls coming out of his room at all hours of the morning, walking out of the door. And I just thought, this is not what I thought that my motherhood journey would be like. Um, anyway, so then the first six months there was very rough. We eventually moved into our own. Uh, apartment which was just incredible and beautiful and just such a level up for us I think getting that place and we had some amazing friends to Kelvin and yeah, Jody so who um, signed a lease for us and and made that happen and just these people who like it's interesting looking back at the people who come in and out of your life at certain points and they just we couldn't have done what we did without these we strangers without yeah and so we were living in this dream apartment looking out over atlantis on the palm like just dream and then i came to chris and i said to him also i just want to backtrack because the first six months of us sort of living together again, we hadn't lived together in such a long time and we had this whole new person with us also. And so our relationship was very, and you were working crazy hours, and our relationship was very just a lot of friction. friction. And we were ships in the night, we didn't really see each other, we certainly didn't have really well, anything I, I'd in common. I'd be up at 4 a.m and gone out of the house and I'd be back doing late afternoon. I'd, my time with Arlo, it was to give her the bottle and put her to bed. And then there would be time for us to have dinner together, but I'd just be exhausted, I'm sure. I was a shadow of myself. So, yeah. Yeah, I'm sorry about that. It's okay. And then, um, so we were really getting to know each other as new people. And uh, I came to you and said, we can't live here anymore. I really want to move to Bali. I'd put together a presentation and I said, this is where we're going to live. This is the type of home we can get. This is how much it's going to cost. This is the gym you can train at. This is, you know, all of these things. And you will, and I said, you, you don't want to be doing this anymore. You want to be doing the online business. You've been dabbling. And I said, if we go here and do this, we have the space so that you can go all in on this, on this online business. And you were like, okay, I'll take care of the money and you get us there. And so I called mum and said, can you 
meet me in Bali in a couple of weeks and we're moving there and I need to find us somewhere to live and you know set everything up there so Arlo and I met mum here and when we first got here Changu now is very very popular there and there was, it was, there was nothing there was two cafes yeah and that was it we had to travel so far to do the grocery shopping we had to travel so far to go to the gym every day yeah it was a 30 minute bike ride motorbike ride yeah to go to the gym and then at the at the beginning as well so i would train for 45 minutes and you'd take arlo and then i'd take care of arlo still in the gym like yeah. just off the corner so she's like crawling around train. so like it was a three hour daily venture for us to be able to get a training session in yeah and then the next few years in Bali were very much you had your life and your life consisted of being in the home office on the computer, training, and that was it. Yeah. And you were just in your cave doing that and I was, I felt very much like like a solo parent yeah. and um, you were there, your body was there, but you weren't there. Um, two year, or a year and a half after coming to Bali. And then we've had so many adventures over the last nine years. We've done so much travel. We've done hundreds of flights with the kids and been all over. And it's so interesting because so many people, we now have this very big family and I never knew or I didn't know it was possible that we could have, that really our life was just beginning when Arlo, yeah, when she came to us. Yeah. And I think so many people are so fearful, especially men, of yeah. foregoing their freedoms and giving up their lifestyle and I've being chained so to this many baby. conversations with men that come to me petrified, mm. terrified uh, of even the concept of fatherhood. marriage yeah. and then fatherhood. Uh, so that's something I, I want to be able to help alleviate in any mm-hmm. way, shape or form that I can. And I see, I see men talking to you so scared and you, you're able to take that away from, for them and give them an alternate reality. I think I just show them yeah, I, I show them something that they've not been able to see yet. Uh, but also very much, I just have a very firm belief that I I don't want to say we have no compromises in our life, but I want to lessen the compromises that we have in our life as well. And, mm-hmm. and the crazy thing is, like, sitting here, I feel like it's actually just starting. Mm, like, so we're about to go through a huge chapter change. Like, I've, I've been going through a huge chapter change... Uh, do you mean Alison A. Armstrong names it going from prince to king like I, I'm in the tunnel right now and I've been very much in a struggle for the last while uh, essentially recreating and coming out someone in you which is why we're doing this Yeah, crazy enough and you're going through a metamorphosis yourself which has been so beautiful to watch like watching you go from a teenage girl to the woman that you are today is one of the biggest blessings in my entire life. Like I think it's just incredible. The, the woman that you are now is just is awe-inspiring. And to me, it's almost painful because you don't put yourself out and you don't share the beauty that's inside of you, that treasure that you have. And that's why I'm wanting to nudge and help and do anything that I can. And I'm so happy that we're doing this because you've got so much to share with the world that I just... I don't want you to die with that song still inside. Thank you. What do you think's been the uh, biggest lesson for you during this entire period? Um, now again, we just stopped the story at about six years ago. Yeah, this is like six, literally six years six ago. Six years ago. <laughs> um, do you want to wrap the, wrap, wrap the story up? Because I want to get to the questions as well. Um, I feel like, so from, from six years ago till now, We've had, so we've had a total of five pregnancies. We had one late miscarriage between our second and third daughters. 
I was pregnant again with Rumi, our third daughter, two months after the miscarriage. So it felt like I was pregnant for about a year. Then we were very satisfied with our family. Three, we thought we've done it, we've, this is it, it's, we're complete. Um, couldn't, I just never thought we would have four children. And Noah, our fourth, uh, like we always say, we don't know how, we don't know how she's here. And she just... I do. Well, I mean, we know <laughs> how. <laughs> and that's a funny thing because um, when you have a large family, people, like I've never talked about our sex life so much as I have in the last year being pregnant with your fourth child and then having four children like people just assume you're like rabbits or something I don't, I don't know it's like this funny there's no barrier anymore people would just like want to know about everything and contraception and well I'm happy to share that stuff maybe yeah. maybe in the next episode let's do birth and sex life yeah um so I feel like I've skipped a lot in the last six years but it's been a lot of um, backing ourselves and really you and I being so strong together. And one of the questions that kept coming up when I posted on Instagram, what, what do you want us to talk about, was about our relationship and how we are able to have business together, have this large family together um, and still love each other, basically. And I think the biggest lesson coming back to that is we over the last 17 years that we've been together but especially over the last nine years is we have both been on our individual growth journeys and we have had to re-meet each other and re-get to know each other again and again and again. And there's been something that has kept pulling us back like an elastic band when we could have very easily have gone our separate ways. And there's been many times when we've talked about like, should, do, do you think this is it? Like, is this, should, do we need to have some time apart? What would that look like? And that's obviously something that we've never shared publicly before. But um, I feel like we're really just getting started now. Like, we're 35, we've got our four beautiful girls, we've got the... I've never felt so alive. Yeah. And like, it's just beginning. Yeah. And who, like, I don't know, I've never heard anyone say that before. No. It's like, you think your life is as good as it's going to get when you're in your 20s and you're single and you've got no worries and you're carefree and we've got the weight of four humans and each other. And then but there's it the feels business, but then there's the mouths that we feed because of our business and our team members and the flow and effect of that. And yeah. Like there are a lot of plates that get spun from what it is that we do. But I also think, I think one thing that we've both been great at is being able to surrender to what life is putting in front of us and accepting of it as well. And the chapters, that's something that we've been really good at is like knowing the chapter yeah. that we're in. So for example... You're very good at reminding me of that, yeah. I'll be honest as well, like because I could be very neck deep in a problem or stuff going on and it's just like, hey, this is just this chapter going on. And I think that's why I keep using that language right now. I'm like, we're like we're literally about to go through a chapter change. I've said that so many times mm-hmm. recently. I'm like, the last few pages are getting written. We're about to turn this page into the new chapter. Yeah. But wanting to do it really consciously mm-hmm. and be like, well, like, for me, it's been, well, who do I want to be? What's the type of husband I want to be? The father I want to be? The friend I want to be? The man that I want to be? And getting very granular into what those details are. Mm-hmm. Um, because I like we you said before we've been falling forward and I think we've been great at being able to fall forward which is what a lot of life is at the end of the day but I think we're at a point now where we've created so much freedom in our life we've created so much abundance and now it's like well now what do we do now what yeah I think up until this point the the words that I have often 
had to remind myself of is fortune favours the brave and we've been so brave we've done so many things that people would never do would never think to do I'm so reluctant to put that label on myself but brave yeah you're incredibly brave yeah and I feel like though we need some new words now for this next chapter what is it I don't know maybe we'll come back with that we'll figure that out then yeah all right what are the more questions that came through um so just quickly on our relationship because I feel like okay. that's something um I had some voice notes with a friend the other day and they've got one um one child and she said how she said I'm really missing my partner and I feel like we're just not, we're not having the time together. We're not like prioritizing each other. How do you do it with four? Like what, what do you do? And I said to her, you just need to be really opportunistic. And we, if we see a little slither of a window where we can like go to the sauna together or get a coffee together or do something together, mm. we just grab that and make the most of it and I think deciding that we're really going to prioritize each other and our relationship together has been very it's changed our relationship in such a good way especially in the last few years I know before you would have grabbed those opportunities for work and I would have grabbed those opportunities for mothering and um, I feel like we've just really like recommitted to each other my answer to that question is more of a case of I want to be as conscious as I possibly can and aware in the present in the moment. So like quite literally, I journal every morning and I ask myself like, what would today, what would today look like if it was a win in each of the parts? And I ask myself as a father and as a husband as two specific of the six areas. And I want to then review that at the end of the day and be like, how did I show up for Lauren? I literally ask myself that every day, like how did I show up for Lauren today? And I think there is a balance of, op I think it's harmonizing between being structured and being opportunistic. And it's the case of like the chaos and order and where do you sit between? So for example, like last night, we're like, hey, we can have a sauna and ice bath and a coffee together this morning. And we're like super pumped to be able to spend that 45 minutes yeah. together in the morning. Uh, Changes and everything. Then it was like, there's other things where I think the opportunistic side, like we made love last night and it was a case of, Noah was asleep in, in a cot, cot, in a cot, like, <laughs> dude, like, in her cot, and Not I, I look over to you, and I'm like, can I give you a massage, and I've obviously got a twinkle in my eye when I ask that question as well, <laughs> and you're like, yeah, and so, I think it is between the two, but I think what you're, what you do so beautifully, Lauren, is you're able to be like, and for this, your friend that asked this question, it's, one, can you be aware of what it is that you're doing to actually have strength in that relationship and to be able to connect and to be able to have the conversations that you need to to be like hey Loz I don't feel that we're spending enough time together right now like I don't like this I don't like that and I think we're really good at being able to do that with each other as well mm -hmm. that we can come to and talk about how we're feeling about things and come to a better movement forward and then honestly I think it's being able to take full responsibility from where I am for it like I take 100%, you take 100%, and then we're able to move it on from there. Because yeah. otherwise, I think it can come into a bit of a tit-for-tat game. We're like, well, I did this and mm. you did that. And I was like, well, that, that's a game no one wins. I think also expressing our expectations. Like, for yes. example, yes. Um, me saying to you, I expect you every night to take the rubbish out, have the kitchen sink completely clean and if you can do that for me I will never like I don't have to ask you I'm not going to be like on you can we give a real life example for this because I think this is a good thing to share so we're about to go to Australia for a full month uh do you mean we're going to and it's just for as a why not adventure let's have some fun let's go somewhere different like that sort of scenario for us as a family and we sat down and I was like, I asked you, I was like, what are your expectations with me mm. and work 
specifically during this next month like how are we going to navigate this as a family of six now yeah uh and you are able to answer it really easily and clearly and so then that gives me the information to then walk away and go like okay this is the container that i have right now and quite literally it's like i'm going to wake up at 4 30 i do my meditation my journaling because i love doing that for myself every morning but then i'm out the door and i'm going to go i've got like 90 to 120 minutes of work and that's all the work that i can do for the day so that when we're then going for a walk in the morning i'm like i'm dad for the rest of the day yeah but i, I think what i don't want the person listening or watching us right now to do is fully lose the context of everything because the thing is I know, like, just working, like, I don't work that much anymore, which is a, a beauty of it and what we've built with these businesses, but it's a case of, I know before and after that, I have to prioritise work a lot more. And, yeah. like, I, I even asked you this morning, I was like, what do you think I need to get done before we go on this trip so I can be as free as possible for this because I wanted your input? And so I think it's understanding the chapters or the seasons that mm-hmm. you're going through. So it's a case of, hey, we're about to have this month long holiday as a family somewhere else what are your expectations what are my expectations and we're going into it already knowing yeah. how we show up for each other and knowing that you're well we're both like preloading over the next week and getting as much done as we can before yeah then. like i'm literally shoot, we're shooting this interview now so yeah. we don't have to think about this stuff later on yeah um <laughs> i think no is awake <laughs> sorry. oh sorry the microphone um so yeah, I think the other question that kept coming up was about our parenting yep. style um, or philosophies. So what do you, do you have any thoughts on that? Do you want to uh, describe? That's a big question and I don't know if we're going to be able to fit that all in right now. I think for me, parenting styles and philosophy, the only first thing that comes to me is we have four children and therefore I have four different parenting philosophies Mm. because they're just so individual and I don't want to lump them together Mm. uh, with that. And I I think the main principle that weaves between all of them is they deserve the best me and I have to be my best self. And whenever I've not been my best self, that's when I look back and I go, I fucked up then. I should have been better. And I intend to be better. How about you? Um, I really love the saying, firm boundaries and wild freedom within. And I think we, like we run a very tight ship and we have uh, rhythm and routines throughout our day and week and years and um, we're very good at sticking to those which I think can be also a weakness but it's definitely a strength and in that we gain so much freedom from doing that even as such a large family Um, I think people want also a label like are you do you practice attachment parenting are you Montessori style are you Steiner style like people really want to label you put on yourself Mm. that way the more like when you name me you negate me and I'm like you, you kind of you keep restricting so yes you want the boundaries and container and like understandings but I don't know when like when you say that I'm like oh like ooh. yeah we're none of that but we're all of that it's like yeah. um, picking and choosing from different things that align and I think also because we did become parents at such a young age and we had no experience being around children or fa- like we had no, we were so naive and it was such a blessing yeah also moving to another country literally on the other side of the world with such a big time difference and there was nobody to rely on and we had to just figure it out and i you're beautifully suzanne and glenn your mother and stepfather uh have been so brilliant at being with us and around us so much during the time but also when i look back it's just like it's been the two of us yeah for the last nine plus years Mm -hmm. of parenthood and it's been hard and we've said to each other a lot like it takes a what's the phrase you use it takes a community to build a family to raise a family yeah family yeah 
And so I just think there's that's so true mm -hmm. and it's something why in this next chapter right now what we're cultivating more is having Community. more communal aspects yeah. with the people that we love and enjoy so much i also think um i see a lot of people wanting to be the perfect parent yeah. and wanting to be everything so it's like a cur the curse of information reading so much and trying and listening to so much and like consuming so much about how they're going to parent that they're losing themselves and they're losing their intuition and i think that us being predominantly just the two of us we were able to really just be like well we don't have family to ask we don't have friends to ask we don't have a doctor like i don't know let's just like figure it out and we have and in that we've gained and I know for myself I've gained so much confidence and I have so much conviction about the decisions that we've made and the way we do things because I've had to learn to listen to that and trust that more than any book or any podcast or any parenting guru or you know mother-in-law saying whatever your mother might not your mum, but like for other people. Um, and it's just been so freeing because I feel like in becoming a parent, I've learned to trust myself more than anybody else. And um, I just hope that, yeah, when people, there were so many questions about parenting and parenting styles and what do you follow? And it's like me, I follow me. So I, I love that you said that because I was going to say the answer is not trying to have an answer. Mm. And so it's being open to you have to learn, you have to experiment. And that's the thing, like take what we're saying. Do not look at us as anything to be able to get a, an answer, especially a concrete answer from. But take it, apply it, investigate. Does it work for you? Does it not? And I think that's that's a part of the beauty of what parenthood is and what life is, is you have to be able to have more of an open-minded, not having certainty. Yeah. At the end being of the okay day. with being uncertain. Yeah. Yeah. I love this. Me too. Thank you so much. So, okay, this is part one of part however knows. I don't know, there's so many questions. In the next one, yeah. uh, let's do parenting, birth, and sex life. Mm -hmm. Can we cool with that? Yeah. And then uh, if you have more questions uh, or anything that you want us to be able to cover together, especially uh, in the next episodes. If you're on a podcast, leave a review, tell us there. That's the easiest way to do it. Uh, if you're on YouTube, comment below. If there's anywhere else on the social media land, you'll figure out a way to be able to communicate it. Send a DM for us as well. Uh, I love you, Lauren. I love and you. And I appreciate you. Thank I you for sitting you. down with me and sharing this. I hope you've been able to get plenty out of this as well with us sitting down for the very first time and literally opening up our life that we've never done before. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you.